Uh, hi everyone and welcome uh, to this series of electrical B7 power system engineering uh, question for BO exam and uh, today we will have one uh, of three phase uh, question and this is from the exam of December 2023 so it's very very close and this question has three parts but are somehow uh, related to each other as we will uh, we will see so we'll start with the first part. It says here a three-phase 600 ABC sequence, uh, 60 hertz distribution system has three loads, and you are given the specs of these three loads. Now, the first thing that you notice here, there are two mistakes uh, uh, in this question. The first one it says that the Y connected, the load number one, is five kilovolt. This is wrong. It has to be 5 kVA because we don't specify the load by the voltage plus the load voltage here is already given as 600 volt. The second mistake was in part load 2. It says here load 2 has is 3 kilowatt plus 1 kVA. That cannot be, it's not possible because as we know from the power triangle, this is the apparent power S, this is P, and this is a Q. Using the Pythagorean theory that we know that S has to be more than B and more than Q. It, S cannot be uh, less than P or less than Q. So this is not KVA, this should be KVAR. So this, these are two mistakes I found in this uh, uh, question and there are some other missing information in the other parts as we will see. Then it says here, what's the total apparent power consumed by the three loads? The best way to solve this question is basically to find P1, Q1, P2, Q2, P3, Q3 of each load. So we'll start from load number one. And in load number one, we know that S1 is equal to 5 kVA. And the power factor 1 is equal to 0.8 lagging. So from this, you can find P1 using the power triangle. This is your theta. This is the power factor angle. So this is nothing but S1 times power factor 1. And this will give me 4 kilowatt. And then I can find Q1 easily using the Pythagorean theory. So it is S1 squared minus P1 squared. And this will give me five squared minus four squared, which is equal to three KVAR. So I found Q1 and P1. Let's move to load number two. For load number two, it has been already given to you. So P2 is equal to three kilowatt. And Q2 is equal to 1 kVAR. Then load number 3, we are given the power. So we know P3 is equal to 2 kilowatt. We are given theta 3 is equal to 26.6 degree. Now, again, using the power triangle, we know that tan theta is equal to Q over P. So from this, your Q3 as a magnitude is equal to 2 kilowatt times basically tan of 26.2. And this is approximately will give me 1 kVAR. However, this question says that this is a leading power factor. If it's a leading power factor, then your Q3 has to be minus 1 kVAR because this is a capacitive load. And in the capacitive load, it's, it's considered as actually a source of reactive power. So it consumes negative reactive power. In other words, it produces reactive power. So from this, you will find the total S which is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus J Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So this will give me 9 plus J3 kVA. So that is my complex power. 
Okay. Now let's go for part two. It says, what is the magnitude of the line current in load number two? Okay. So we want to find the load current of load two. So basically, this is a delta load. Okay, so we look just zoom to the load itself. So this is the line current of this, of the load. So what needs only the magnitude. So your IL is equal to, we know S2, okay, divided by root 3 times the line voltage, which is 600 volts. So this is equal to S2. Now, if you go back here, this is has 3 plus 1 kVr. So your S2 is nothing but 3 squared plus 1 squared divided by root 3 times the line voltage, which is the 600 volt. So this is root of 10 divided by root 3 times 600. Of course, this is times 10 to power 3 because this is kVa. So your line current is equal to approximately 3.043 amps. So this is part B. Finally, part C, it says, what is the uh, impedance of load 3? This is your load 3. So your load 3 is a Y connected and basically it's a capacitive load. So we can model it as a resistance in series of the capacitor. So we want to know the Z here. And this is straightforward. So the Z of load 3 is equal to 3 VAN divided by S3 conjugate. So this is equal to 3. The voltage is... The, this is the phase voltage, so it is 600 divided by root 3. And I will consider this is the reference, so this is angle 0, divided by your S3, okay? Now, your S3 is basically is 2 minus 1. So this is equal to 2 minus J1, everything conjugate. Now the conjugate, this is a zero angle, nothing will happen, but this would become positive. So your Z3 will equal to 0.4157 minus J.2078 ohm, or equal to 0.4648 angle of minus 26.565 ohms as, as well. So that is the impedance of this load and this is expected because we have here a capacitive element and we know that the impedance of the capacitive element is minus j over omega c so we'll have the minus sign we see it also also here so that is the first part and the second part says here a delta connected capacitor bank is placed in parallel with load one or in other way in parallel with the whole three loads because these three loads are connected in parallel Okay, so we add a capacitor bank connected in delta. So what is the power rating of the bank? Now here is the another issue with this question. It didn't specify what is the new power factor that has to be after adding the capacitor. Okay, so it didn't specify what is what is what do you want? So I'm assuming here that for this question that the new power factor should be equal to 1 as this is usually the norm but it's not specified now for the power factor to be equal to 1 it means that the q total of the loads and the capacitor bank should be equal to 0 okay so we know that s total we have that before is equal from the previous part is equal to 9 plus j3 kva so in a very simple way that your Q total has to be equal to 3kVAR. It will be, of course, negative to compensate for the 3kVAR consumed by the load. And then you will have total Q equal to zero and you will have only basically a resistive, resistive load. Okay. Then in part two, it says here, what is the phase current IAB? This is I'm assuming 
in the uh, capacitor bank. So basically your capacitor bank connected in parallel with the load. So it will be something like this. Okay, so we need to find what is basically the, if this is A, B, C. So we wanna find what is your I, A, B, magnitude and an angle, which is very, very straightforward. So we know the total Q of the uh, capacitor is 3 kVr. So QC is equal to 3 kVar. Okay, so this means that we can find the current I, the phase current IAB is equal to the total kVr divided by 3 times the phase voltage. Now, the phase voltage for the uh, Delta connection is the same as the line voltage, so this is times 600, and this will give me, and this is the magnitude of the current, is equal to 1.67 amps. Now, we need to find, basically, the phase. Now, we said here that we, we will use the phase voltage as an angle of zero, so it means that the line, the line voltage will have an angle uh, of basically, so your VAB of 30 will be equal to 600 angle of 30. Now, we know that the current in the capacitor, in a pure capacitor, lead the voltage by 90 degree. So your IAB will equal to the magnitude angle of 30 plus 90 or 1.67 angle of 120 amps. The final part in the second question says here, explain the reason why the capacitor should be in, in delta. Okay, there is one big advantage of the delta connection as we will, I will explain it uh, uh, to you. So the C pair capacitor, the, the capacitance of each capacitor is equal to QC over 3, you divide the total QC by 3, so you will find the QC for each capacitor, because this is a three-phase system, divided by the voltage of the capacitor squared times omega, okay? Now, if I want to select between Y connected and delta connected, so the voltage of the capacitor, so in delta, we use V line in Y connection, we use V phase. And of course, V line is more than V phase by root three. So in V square, it will be three times. So the C in the capacitor is less by a factor the C in the capacitor delta is less by a factor of three in capacitor in Y connection. So basically, uh, this is this is the main advantage that we will have. We'll do the same job, but by capacitance less than by a factor of three. So if it's the Y connection, I'm using let's say. Uh, nine uh, microfarad, then I can do the same thing by three microfarad. All the only thing I need to do is basically is to change the connection. The only thing that I have to make sure that 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 capacitor can satisfy is the voltage because the voltage per capacitor uh, in the Y connection will be less by the factor of root three. As far as the capacitor can take the line voltage, then the delta connection is more economical to me than using the Y connection. The last question here, it's, it's a bit vague. It says here, a small neutral current is detected in load three. The load three, which is the Y connected load. So we have here a Y uh, connected load, which is basically load three, which is was the capacitive load. So the neutral, it says it, there is a small current, I neutral is not equal to zero. Okay, so it says here, what could be the cause of the current? Now, there I can think of two reasons. The first one is the voltage at the load is not balanced. OK, 
okay? Because see here it says assume that the phase impedance are exactly the same. So, so the Z here, ZY is exactly the same. So the only reason at steady state that you will have uh, a current in the neutral means that the summation of all the currents of phase A and phase B and phase Z is not equal to zero. It means that there is an imbalance in the currents. So if the impedances are balanced, then the voltage could be uh, uh, not balanced, okay? The other reason I can think of basically, and this is you can check that easily by just measuring the voltages in the three phases and make sure that they are uh, exactly equal. If we have a single line to ground fault, even a small uh, 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 fault current, like for example, if the basically there is an impedance in, in the way of the fault, you will have uh, in the neutral, even if everything is balanced, now if you have a fault, single line to ground fault, then you will have basically the zero sequence current the zero sequence current, which only appears under fault conditions. So the zero sequence current will basically, these are three currents in phase. So you will have a zero sequence current in phase A, phase B, phase C. So these three currents will add up and you will have three of this uh, zero sequence current in the, in the neutral. Now, if there is uh, an impedance here that limits the fault current so that you're let's say your breaker did not detect it okay so the, you need to check that there is no any fault in your in yours in your system so that is an overall of question this question of the uh, december of uh, 2023